Okay, well good afternoon everyone. My name is Scott Emmert. I'm the Vice President of Communications with the San Jose Sharks. I'd like to welcome those of you here in attendance today, as well as to all those who are watching on all the Sharks digital platforms, including the Sharks Plus SAP Center app presented by Western Digital, NBCSportsCalifornia.com, and of course, listening on the Sharks Audio Network. In just a moment, we'll start with some prepared remarks from Sharks President Jonathan Becker and Assistant General Manager Joe Will. At that point, we will introduce today's distinguished guest. Following the prepared remarks from those here up at the podium, we will open it up to questions from media members. At the end of the Q&A, for those photographers in attendance, we will have a photo opportunity here at the front of the stage. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Sharks Sports Entertainment President, Jonathan Becker. Thanks, Scott. And good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Sharks sole owner, Hasso Plotner, who unfortunately was unable to join us today due to a prior commitment overseas, I'm extraordinarily pleased to welcome the new general manager of the San Jose Sharks, Mike Greer. Obviously, the last several years was disappointing for us as an organization. As a result, this GM search was about more than just one single individual. It was the opportunity for a thorough and unbiased analysis of everything in our organization and a chance to set a new path forward, a path anchored on the winning culture that we demand and that our players and our fans have been accustomed to. Before today's announcement, you've seen that we've already started making some changes, and you can expect more changes in the weeks ahead. During my career, I've been fortunate enough to interview and hire many senior executives. And in those searches, there's almost always one attribute that separates the chosen candidate from everyone else. There are many candidates that have talent, many that have experience, and many that want the role. But there are precious few candidates that have the strength of character to lead, not just in good times, but in difficult ones. Mike has consistently demonstrated that strength of character. Mike Greer is a leader. Hasso, Joe, and I had a chance to talk to many talented candidates during the course of this process, all of them for multiple times. Altogether, we put in something like 200 hours in this exhaustive, Mike might say sometimes exhausting, interview process. We did our work. And while we were intrigued and appreciative of many candidates, especially those that ended up being the finalists, Mike separated himself from the pack by a continued commitment to culture. Culture not just on the ice, but off the ice as well. Mike is a true testament to one of our organization's principles, and that is, say what you mean, and then do what you say. During the course of this GM search, we also had the opportunity to talk to many people around the game of hockey and get their feedback, including several of our distinguished Sharks alumni some of which are here now. Our alumni were vocal in their support of Mike Greer as a GM, citing his leadership qualities, his work ethic, and his continuous commitment to always be learning. One of the strongest proponents for Mike as a general manager was Chris Jury, the current general manager of the New York Rangers. Chris has known Mike for a long time, as a player, as a coach, and of course, in his last role as part of the Ranger management team and gave a very strong endorsement of which we agree. Today starts a new chapter in the history of the Sharks franchise. From my own point of view, as a longtime fan, as a former season ticket holder, and of course, as the team president, I could not be more excited to see the future that Mike leads us into. So Mike, Ann, Jaden, Brooklyn, and Tristan, welcome back to San Jose. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. It's been an enjoyable experience telling staff members, current players, and alumni that Mike Greer is going to be the new GM of the Sharks. Ultimate professional, great leader and teammate, poised and composed, competitor and loves to win, knows the game, amazing family, were just a few of the comments I heard from everyone. Mike's unique journey in hockey is what makes him ready for this opportunity. Mike's 1,060 games played over 15 seasons. It's 258th in the history of the National Hockey League. After he completed playing, he had a talent evaluator to his resume as a scout for the Blackhawks for four years, where he won a Stanley Cup in 2015. Mike groomed his coaching experience starting with prep school, then with the USA Hockey Women's Program, and ultimately back in the National Hockey League with the New Jersey Devils. Mike took this complete background and became a valuable member of Chris Drury's executive team with the New York Rangers this past season, where the team improved 50 points over the previous year and played through the 2022 Eastern Conference Finals. If this all wasn't enough, Mike's exposure to his father and brother's experience in the NFL have shown Mike firsthand what it's like to be a pro sports executive. During this interview process, Mike impressed us immediately with his current thorough knowledge of NHL talent and teams, along with a vision that takes into account all aspects of the game, coaching, scouting, player development, wellness, mental skills, data science, physio training, and contract management. Further, Mike gave us confidence that a capable staff will be put together to help guide his new vision into reality. I can tell you that Mike has already dug in with this draft, free agency, the upcoming coach, coaching hire, and the upcoming contractual period. Successful athletes always talk about the great bonds formed on the ice between teammates and the important contributions built off the ice. And as you can see with the alumni here, Mike has a lot of support. When Mike was a player in San Jose, his wife Ann was instrumental in bringing the players' families together. We're looking forward to having the Greer family back in, in San Jose. Congratulations to Ann, Jaden, Brooklyn, and Tristan. And now, I'm extremely pleased to introduce the new general manager of San Jose Sharks, Mike Greer. Thank you. Thanks for everyone coming out here today, staff, media, especially my former teammates. Um, it means the world to me that you guys were able to show up and support me today. Thank you. Um, first off, I'd like to thank Mr. Plattner, Jonathan, Joe, and the Sharks organization for this opportunity and for entrusting me to guide this franchise through its next chapter. I'd also like to thank Chris Drury, and Ryan Martin with the New York Rangers for their support throughout this process. I'd like to thank my dad, Bobby, and my brother, Chris, as well. Your love and support, wisdom, guidance have helped me through this process, and I have learned so much from you over the years, not just from a sports perspective, but more importantly, how to treat people. Unknowingly, you have been preparing me for this job since I was about 10 years old. I'd like to thank my family. Jaden, Brooklyn, T-Man, and most of all, Ann. You've been there from the beginning, through the years at BU, through my playing career, the ups and downs, the injuries, the wins and losses, and now you're here again supporting me. You're the best. I love you guys. To the city of San Jose, I'm happy to be back. We're thrilled to be back. It's a place that we always loved from day one, and it holds a special place in our heart. We spent three wonderful years here. Jaden learned to skate here, played some t-ball, and had some uh, 
interesting flag football games, as you reach, pro, reach might remember. Um, my daughter, Brooklyn, she's been uh, my assistant here, my informal assistant. She's had to sit through many of hockey phone calls on her rides home from school and tennis lessons. She was born here, and she's, she's a Cali girl. She's excited to be back. And the little T, you'll be a junior shark. I think, see your coach over there. You might have a coach over there in the corner. Scored 50 goals one year. He's not a bad guy. So we love it here. The community welcomed us from day one with open arms. It truly is a great place to live and raise a family. On the ice, I felt nothing but love and support from the best fans in the world from day one. Just thinking about skating through the shark head, especially during playoff time, gives me the chills. The San Jose Sharks are a franchise with a history of success, and I'm looking forward to the challenge of getting this franchise back to its winning ways. To all the Sharks fans worldwide, I want you to know that myself and my staff will do everything possible to put a team on the ice that you can be proud of and to bring a cup to the Bay Area. Thank you. All right, at this time, we'll go ahead and take some questions from the media here in attendance. We do have two microphones, one on each side of the uh, aisleway here. So just raise your hand and one of them will get to you as soon as we can. If you wouldn't mind, please introduce yourself so that uh, Mike gets to know some of the faces around here. Hi, Mike. Uh, Josh Dubow from Associated Press. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan talked about culture was a big thing with you. How do you define culture, and, and what do you do as a GM to sort of establish the culture you want here? Uh, for me, culture is it's not words. You know, you can go through the sports teams' locker rooms, and you see words all over their dressing room. To me, it's... It's about people. It's about investing in people, surrounding yourself with the right people, people who are passionate about their job, who love their job, and are selfless, team-first people. That's what culture means to me. And as a, as a general manager, it's for me to find those types of players on the ice and also surround myself with those type of hockey people in our hockey operations department. Curtis. Mike. Hi, uh, Curtis Michalka from Bay Area News Group. Congratulations on, on the new job. Thank you. Um, I'm sure you'd like to hit the ground running here. What would you say your top priorities are right now? Uh, well, first off, we're going to head out to Montreal here in a little bit. So it's to dig into the draft, and our scouts have done a good job. I think it's Joe's done an excellent job with bro, both our amateur and pro scouts, keeping them on task. And those guys have been busy putting the work. So my job now is to go in there and listen to what they have to say, maybe make a few suggestions here or there. So the draft's number one. Then we've got free agency coming up. We'll have to dig into that. I think Joe and I have already started on that a bit. And development camp, and then coach, you know, we've got to get into the coaching search. We've got to find a coach. We've got to start building our hockey operations staff. So there's a lot to do, but mainly the draft and free agency are, are on the top of the list right now. Hey, Mike, uh, Sheng Peng, San Jose Hockey Now. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, can you speak to uh, the coaching search and just uh, how long do you anticipate that taking? Uh, how many sort of candidates do you expect to talk to? Um, just like Jonathan was with, with this, hopefully not quite as long, but we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll have a thorough search. Um, I don't really have a timetable on it just because of the, the time of the calendar it is. Like, we, like I just said, we got to get into the draft and free agency. Those, kind of, those things are taking priority um, so we can get the players we would like or try and get the players we like and start building our prospect pool back up. So um, I don't have a timetable on the coach, but it's definitely something um, starting, you know, probably starting today. We'll start, well, I have, we have the list together, but we'll start reaching out and trying to make contact with the people we'd like to speak with. Uh, speaking of the, the coach, I was wondering uh, your opinion of uh, Bob Bugner's performance. You know, he was just uh, let go as Sharks coach uh, last week. Well, I can't really speak to it. I, if you're not here um, around the coach every, on a daily basis and, or, or, 
or part of the, the management team and things like that. I can't really speak to, to Bob as a coach, to be honest with you. I'm, I, I don't want to lie to you and try and make something up. I don't really know too much about him on that, on that subject. Paul? Uh, congratulations, Mike, uh, for making some history again. You're no stranger to history. Um, welcome to San Jose. Um, now that you look at the team, uh, where do you feel there's a greatest opportunity uh, to improve the team, whether it's defense, uh, goaltending, or the offense, given your style of hockey? Well, I think there's, I think we can improve it in every facet, to be honest with you. Where there's some pieces on the roster that we like, that we like to build around, but I think um, overall, there's not, not one spot in particular I think needs work. I just think the roster, we need to keep working on the roster and trying to keep better at, get better as a, as a team. Michael? All right, Michael Robertson, African-American athlete. All right, congratulations on a pioneering uh, scenario here. Um, are you at least cognizant of what the perception is to a certain extent here with what happened with Evander? And of course, what happened with the uh, Barracuda with a player set of racial epitaph. So is that something that you're thinking about coming in with this pioneering moment that you just accomplished today? Uh, thank you. Um, it's not something I'm, I'm overly thinking about. I think for me, I want to work someplace where I feel passionate about, um, that I'm surrounded by good people. So I'm confident with talking to um, Mr. Platner and Jonathan and Joe and knowing some of the staff that have, have been here before, um, I don't see any issues with it. It's a place that I, I want to be, my family wants to be, so it's not something that I've, I've given too much thought into. You know? Um, I've been a fan of the Sharks from the first day, and at one time they had a, quite a bit of number of outstanding players from Russia. Since now Russian athletes are not welcome, do you see this as a problem? Um, I don't see it as a problem. I think it's something we'll have to address as, um, as an organization. Um, I don't ever want to close the door on, on the kids and make them pay the price for something that's happening in their, in their country that, you know, 99% of them have no control over what's happening to them, right? And, you know, we don't want to cross them off the list or say they're bad people or this or that. We like they're a good, play, good person and a good player. You know, I think we're open to giving them opportunity. And like I said, it's these kids, like a lot of people in this conflict are kind of stuck in the middle and paying the price for other people's actions. Marco? Uh, Marco Ekolovich, Bay Area Sports Wrap. Uh, good morning, Mike, and congratulations again on getting this position here for the Sharks. Thank you. Would you be open to having a rebuilding process with this team for the next couple of years, get everyone what the salary cap thing is, is having it being so low that it is and that this team doesn't have that much cap room. Would you be open to that idea? Well, I don't think we're, we're not looking to tear this down like Arizona or some teams have done in the past. Um, yes, there's some challenges with the salary cap, but I think the majority of the league is dealing with the flat cap and, and they have their issues. So for us, um, we're not looking to rebuild, but you know, Jonathan said it at, at dinner once there, there's a lot of R words you can use. Um, but for us, there might be a few bumps in the road ahead and maybe we gotta step back a little bit to go forward, but we're gonna try and get better and try and make the roster better every day. The goal is to win here. I'm a competitive person, same as Jonathan and Joe and Hasso. Like, the goal is to win, so we're gonna try and put the most competitive team we can out in the ice and do what we think is right by the organization to just keep getting better and better. In the back of the riser. Yeah, Mike, congratulations. Dustin Dorsey with ABC7 News. Uh, obviously, what's your pride level in being the first African-American general manager? And, and on top of that, you know, someone has to be the first, but what do you hope this does for diversity in the league going forward? Um, I mean, I'm, it's something I'm extremely proud of. Um, since my playing days, the league itself has, has gotten more and more diverse. There's more black players in the league and minorities in the league. There's more women and minorities in front office and scouting and coaching positions. So um, from my standpoint, I'm, I, that's something that I'm happy to see and exciting to see. 
Um, and for me, I, you know, my job is to do the best I can for the San Jose Sharks organization. And if I do that, hopefully it opens the door to, to give other opportunities to other minorities to, to get in front office positions and, and maybe lead a team down the road as well. Josh. Mike, how much, um, you talked a little bit about your, your brother and dad. How much do you, do you lean on them? Obviously different sports, but you know, similar types of jobs. How much do you lean on them? Are there lessons you've learned from Chris, especially with the situation he, he got into in Miami and sort of having to rebuild a team there and how he's done with that? Yeah, I lean on them quite a bit. Um, you know, there's a, a wealth of knowledge there with those two. Um, as, soon as, I, as soon as I told my dad about the job, you know, he went right into the mode of giving me tips and advice. So... Um, but I, I talk to them a lot, and my, like you were saying, my, my brother's recently been through this with the Dolphins where, you know, he made some decisions to, to move, on some play, move on from some players to be better in the future, and he's turned that team around in about four years where now, you know, I think they're, they're a contender. They got talent all over the field, so it's something we've talked about, and you know, growing up, we talked about the challenges of building rosters and things like that. At dinner, would be I'd want to talk football, they'd want to talk hockey. So um, I lean on them a lot. They got a lot of a different perspective because of sports, but I definitely lean on them a lot and, and, and trust their input. Shane, sure. Mike, can you speak to some of the tips that you may have received from your father or from Chris in terms of the inter GM interviewing process? Uh, well, I think the main thing was to be. To be yourself, um, you know, you don't want to go somewhere and be phony, and then you get on the job, and they're, and they're, you know, Jonathan's calling Joe like this. This isn't what we signed up for. So trying to be open and honest, be myself, um, have a vision, be clear about your vision, and and when you when you come to your how you want to how your vision wants to go, stick stick to your process. But for the main thing was to to be myself. And I also want to ask you about a couple of the challenging cap situations that you do have uh, very, uh, looming. Uh, you know, right now we're in the buyout window and also to obviously the Vander Kane grievance. Uh, can you speak to uh, any of that, any kind of, um, you know, resolutions or, you know, uh, thoughts about either of those situ situations? Um, no, I don't really have anything on the, on the specific players or buyouts or things like that. That's something we'll talk about as a, as a uh, management group. And, and make the decisions we need to make. Yeah, there's some challenges there, but you know, I'm not going to discuss what we, what we're thinking with the players um, at this point. Curtis, Mike, what do you want the identity of the Sarks to be? Um, tenacious, highly competitive, in your face, fast, hard to play against team. I think that's what you see when you watch the playoffs. That's what win in, wins in this league, and you know, that's what we we hope to be. Question for Jonathan, when did you finalize this decision? This weekend, over the holiday weekend. Michael in the back. Okay, Michael Robertson again. Um, are you, have you had any kind of contact with Willie O'Ree or Val James since they both had significant moments? Uh, Willie O'Ree being the first black player and then Val being the first American born black player. So as an American born black player, and now GM, have you had any contact with those guys and do you understand the magnitude of your connection with them? Um, I definitely do. Um, I, haven't, I haven't talked to those, um, those guys in quite a while. I was very fortunate when I was playing and a few years post playing is to have a good relationship with Willie. He was always great with me and I enjoyed working with him and all his, whenever he came to Boston um, and did his clinics there, I'd go and help, try and help him out there and, He'd show up at ice hockey in Harlem and I, when we played there and some things in Detroit. So Willie's great. I always tell people the energy and the passion and love he has for this game of hockey is it's remarkable. Um, you know, he never slows down. Even as he gets older, he's still going 100 miles per hour out there. But um, to your question, I haven't talked to them recently, but um, being able to share moments with Willie and talk with him during those camps and clinics was something that it meant the world to me. He's, um, yeah, he's a great, great man. And if anyone who loves hockey is definitely someone you should try and get a, get a chance to sit down with and have a conversation with. 
So I know with our condensed timing of this announcement and the NHL draft coming up, we do have some media who is not able to attend today. I believe we have some questions that are submitted via Zoom that uh, Dylan will offer here uh, to our panel. So this is from Neil Boudet with the New York Times. For Mike, what was it about your parents or father that produced general managers for two pro franchises? <laughs> Um, I don't know. That's a that's a good question. I think. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to call the old man. But he's. Uh, I don't know. I think the main thing my father I think instilled in us was his work ethic and and the time he put in. He often would be off to work before we left for school, and sometimes he wouldn't get home till after dinner or when we were ready to get in bed. So, just the time and effort it took and. His belief that, you know, you treat people the right way. If you want to have a winning franchise, it, it starts with how you treat people. And his ability to never leave a stone unturned. Like he would stay up to all hours and go go scout wherever it took, whatever whatever needed to be done to, to get the job done. So um, I think those are things I think Chris and I both learned from him. And, you know, I think, you know, my mom was – she was very instrumental in in the character, the character that that we have as well. So, and another question from Neil: Besides Drury, several other BU teammates are in the NHL. John Hines, Jeff Kielty, Jay Pandolfo. Until recently, what was it about those BU teams or the atmosphere that produced this crop of hockey minds? Well, it all starts with Coach Parker. Um, you know, he was the leader of those teams. He believed in a team first, very unselfish group, but he pushed everyone to be the best version of them, themselves you could be. He believed in all of us. He held us accountable. And I think, I think we all learned from that. We learned uh, through the ups and downs, from the wins and losses. And it's just the culture he built there was, was unbelievable. And the story I would, I've told Jaden's team and Tristan's team is the year we won the national championship, we lost the year before in the finals, and we came back, and every, no one complained. We had Chris Drury on the fourth line. You know, you guys, all, everyone knows the career he had. He was on the fourth line, never said a word. Jay Pandolfo was on the third line, two-time Stanley Cup winner, never said a word. No one ever complained about their ice time or, or was looking for credit or, or put blame on everyone. Everyone just did their, did their job, and pulled on the rope the same way so that's a testament to coach Parker and probably all why we took those lessons and probably why we're all have been able to advance in hockey from Aaron Scholl with the fin factor Mike congratulations on being the next GM of the Sharks and breaking barriers in the NHL what do you consider the biggest challenge you will be taking on in the coming months before the season starts um, well I think the biggest challenge is probably trying to gain a little bit of cap flexibility and getting into the process where we are now where you know we're up against the clock with the draft and free agency and, and things like that so I just think that's the challenge of, of just trying to get everything in order as quickly as possible but still doing it the right way and being thorough so I think mainly that kind of the time the time squeeze but it's all a challenge and all everything I'm looking forward to from Ken Campbell how much does it mean to be the first black general manager in NHL history? And for Jonathan Becker, how much does it mean to the organization to make this kind of historic hiring? You can go first if you want. Sure, you want me to? Uh, sure, you can go. So, um, we hired the best general manager available. Mike just happens to be black. The focus was on finding the best candidate for the job. Having said that, it's great. It's part of our pioneering spirit, which is get the most out of everybody, expand the sport. San Jose is a very culturally diverse area as well. So I hope you do serve as an inspiration to lots of people and that I hope you're the first, but certainly not the last. Yeah, I mean, it means a lot to me. It's, um, you know, it's not something I take lightly. Um, I, know, I realize there's a responsibility that comes, comes with the territory, but, you know, I'm, I'm up for it and how I carry myself and, and how the organization carries themselves, I think it'll be, we'll do well and hopefully leave a good footprint and open some doors for, for someone to follow. 
from Teal Town USA. For Mike, can you tell us anything you might have learned as a Sharks player from Doug Wilson with your gen as your general manager? Learned as as a general manager, or yeah. okay. Um, well, Doug, I thought he one of the things I I remembered when I came here is he was he just loved the organization. He was very passionate about it, and he wanted he wanted players who wanted to be here, um, and I think that makes a difference. And that's something I, I I carry with me. You know, I want I want people and players who who want to be part part of the Sharks organization and want to be here to build something and and be there at the end of the line when when we get there. And another question from Neil: What thoughts come back to you when you think of being a walk on at BU? You weren't guaranteed to make your college team, and all these later, years later, you're the named general manager of an NHL franchise. Well, it's um, well for me. It's the lesson is, you know, if you look at college athletics a little bit, it's or even youth sports or whatever it may be. People are seem to be looking for the easy way out, or you know, the grass is greener somewhere else. So. The lesson I learned, I, I got there and, you know, I was a pretty good player going in and I was basically told that the first four games of the season I wasn't going to play, which has never happened to me in my life. I never, I didn't really know what to do, but I rolled up my sleeves, worked harder, practiced harder, put the time in the, in, in the gym and was just determined to win, win my spot back or win a spot in the lineup and, you know, once I got in the lineup, I wasn't going to let anyone take the take my spot so um, I think that's just it it's you know maybe things aren't going your way but put in the work don't run from the challenge and um, you know if you do that and believe in yourself you'll eventually get to where you want to get any other questions from here in the audience do one more with Shang I just had a, a couple for Joe and Jonathan uh, first uh, Joe uh, based on your card uh, you've returned to assistant general manager is that correct Yes, yeah, <laughs> as of uh, today. <laughs> and uh, just a general question for Joel or Jonathan. Um, can you speak to some of the, I guess, the larger requirements uh, that, you know, eventually kind of uh, directed you guys uh, to Mike and also the other finalists for the position? Joe, you want to start? Yeah, I think it was just, uh, you know, how many, how many boxes could everybody check you know everybody has their competencies in in particular areas but with with Mike what was so attractive is is you know just a, truly was a player here um, played so long in the league he's, he's been around the NHL for for 25 years and uh, uh, and from scouting you know he's been in the trenches he's been in the trenches of coaching you know pretty much any staff member uh, here any player he can look at and say I've been there I've done that you know and that's uh, you know that was really uh, to me what what really set him apart from everybody else is just uh, everything that he's done over his career and done it with with honesty and integrity and and hard work and uh, uh, we're just so pleased to have somebody that checks so many boxes and has, is so competent in, in so many areas and he knows so many people in the game as well too so I think when it comes to filling out a staff or, or finding, uh, uh, you know, backgrounds on people, everything else, he's so well connected, and that's that's a huge advantage. I'll add to that. Um, so there are tons of people out there with good hockey IQ. There were lots of candidates, including all of our finalists. There were, I mentioned it in my opening remarks, there were less that had the leadership quality, the ability to really scout talent to think about how to formalize player development in a way more formal than maybe we've done in the past as well. Um, you know, I've seen you and other people speculate that uh, being a past Sharks player was one of our criteria. It was not. That wasn't me. Uh, <laughs> fair <Just> enough. <laughs> uh, it is a happy accident, that uh, not an accident. I mean, it is great that Mike knows San Jose as a kid who was born here, has some connections to the city. That, that's a nice ad. That was never a requirement. In fact, uh, some of our finalists did not have that connection with San Jose whatsoever, but they were willing to put down roots here as well. But more than anything else, a breadth of experience, not being as one-dimensional, having it from a player, from a scout, from a coach, from hockey manager, having seen the game from literally every point of view, he's essentially the most balanced of them. And uh, one more for uh, Joe and Jonathan. Uh, the 
general track for Angel GM is uh, assistant general manager experience. Uh, what about Mike? Uh, you know, transcends that. Well, I think you know, with talking with Chris Drury, I knew everything that he counted on uh, from Mike, and and it was all the duties of an assistant GM. Exactly. So it was. Uh, you know, his title was an advisor, but he was doing the duties of an assistant GM. And again, uh, the experience at uh, all the different levels within there, they touch so many boxes of, of what an assistant general manager does. And, and the number of years that he's actually been working in hockey, uh, the experience is, you know, was quite high, actually. All right, I think that's going to wrap us up here for the question and answers. I want to thank everybody again for attending today. Congratulations to Mike. Uh, we do have a uh, presentation here uh, from Jonathan and Joe to Mike, so if the still cameras want to come forward and take these seats up front so you don't block the cameras in the back, we will uh, move forward with that. Thank you, everybody. Family up here too. Family come up here. Sure. Yeah.